What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five 100 percents that I gave up on. Recently, in March, actually, a previous version of this video that I did kind of blew up out of nowhere. That video is roughly a year old, and for some reason, in March, it got like 150,000 views. And simply getting that many views brought it to my attention again, because I put out videos every day and sometimes I forget about them. Having seen that, I thought it might be fun to do an update of sorts on the games that I gave up on, to put it dramatically, or at least the 100%ing them that I gave up on. Many of these games I covered in some form or fashion, but for some reason or another I just didn't feel like 100%ing them, or in some cases couldn't. Given that a lot of my channel is reviewing games after 100%, people tend to be interested in that. And then, real quick before we dive into the rest of this video, that previous video is still mostly up to date. Really the only thing that has changed that is about to change I would say is that I'm planning on 100%ing The Witcher 2 here pretty soon, which involves going back and getting the last few achievements that I missed, as I've seen basically everything else that game has to offer. So everything on this list will be fresh stuff. So with no further ado, let's actually dive into it. First up, we have Gloomhaven, a faithful adaptation of a popular board game of the same name that originally released back in 2021, very late 2021, like October. But personally, I did not check it out until that following May when it dropped an expansion and the video I have up is on that expansion as well as the basics of the game. But obviously, with it being on this list, it's not a game I 100%. Moreover, it is not a game I ever plan on getting 100% on. But like most of the other games on this list, that's not to say I consider it a bad game by any means. More so the faithful adaptation of the board game part of it. You see, in many ways, the PC version of this game is literally a one-for-one -one translation of that board game, which includes all of the card mechanics for the classes, as well as a lot of other clunky things that don't exactly translate well to a PC. If you watch the channel a lot, you know that I personally already am not a huge fan of card mechanics, so that was already strike one. And then there's just a lot of clunky things around, like, say, picking up loot in a round and then it gets back to the merchant instead of just giving it to you. Gloomhaven in general is also very stringent with the way its card mechanics work as there are discard mechanics and you can absolutely sort of run out of moves for a character which just puts them out of the rest of the combat which means every scenario for the main campaign is highly curated and there's sort of a correct way to do it which killed a lot of the fun for me as well and for a lot of those reasons combined I just really didn't enjoy Gloomhaven even if I can see the appeal of it for most people. So naturally, it's a game I dropped pretty quick. That, however, brings us to our second entry, which is actually King Arthur A Knight's Tale. And some of you might be wondering to yourself why that's on here, because I have a review after 100% for this, to which I would tell you yes for the base game, not the DLC achievements that came afterwards, as I have never played any of the DLC for A Knight's Tale, and that is simply put because I found the main game pretty exhausting. It has some mechanics I'm not fond of, especially around difficulty spikes as you move from act to act, as each act of the game has a sort of tier to its enemies and levels, and as you jump in between chapters, that goes up immediately. However, your characters don't immediately have the new gear that is going to allow them to facilitate those fights, which means basically every act there's this huge difficulty spike as you try to get your characters re-geared, and I found that very frustrating. And after putting up with that and some of the other mechanics for the review after 100%, when the DLC dropped for this one, I just didn't feel like getting it done, quite frankly. Normally, I'm very up to date with all the DLC that comes out for a game. Most of the time, I do actually go back and get all that stuff, but in the case of this game, I just was not up for doing it, especially because the DLC itself are these sort of trial skirmish missions between you and other characters, and I just really didn't feel like going back and dealing with it, so I didn't. And that brings us to number three on the list, which is a bit of a unique one on this list. Much like the previous one, I do have a 100% video for it up, but then later more stuff was added. However, this game is The Waylanders. And unlike all of the other games on this list, which I think are good in their own ways, but in some ways just not for me really, the Waylanders is just bad. There are very few games I would just outright tell you not to buy under any circumstance, and The Waylanders 
Warriors is pretty much it. It is a truly broken game. There are numerous game-breaking bugs. It is eventually possible if you struggle your way through to beat the game. However, there are some quests and things that are irretrievably broken, as in certain side quests will break on you 100% of the time. And because of that, well after the game's release, for some reason, they decided to add a bunch more achievements for all these random little things. And there are at least seven quests that I know of for this game that are quite literally not possible to complete due to the bugs. But even if that weren't the case, I had such a bad time with the base game and just trying to move through it for the review, which was of course noted in that review, that I couldn't be bothered to do a lot of the other stuff that they added in after the fact either, like the achievements for unlocking all the subclasses, which is very doable, all became just a very big hard pass for me, and I am more than happy to let that one sit in the not 100% column at this point for, I assume, obvious reasons. That, though, brings us to our fourth entry on the list, which is Alaloth, Champion of the Four Kingdoms. Now, technically, this is an early access game, which means I wouldn't normally put it on a list like this. However, what is in early access is the full game. Early access here is mostly just aimed at balancing everything around player feedback, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, it is the full game. And the reason I decided not to finish Alaloth after making a video on it and talking about it a little bit is simply put, it's not for me. It's not a game that I enjoy, and it's also not what I expected it to be, because the game sells itself as sort of Baldur's Gate meets Dark Souls, that is to say, isometric RPG with more Dark Souls real-time combat. And while they definitely got the combat part of that correct, the RPG part, not so much. This game is just combat. There is a world where you can sort of explore and find various cities and the like, and they'll have quests for you, but it's all stuff like go kill 10 of this, go get this thing from there. So all of the gameplay is really centered around your character and clearing dungeons, because the goal of the game is to find several items that will then open the way to the end game. However, there are also several AIs kind of working at the same time as you are doing the same stuff, and to use the dev's own words, it's focused on the world rather than your character. And because of this, the game is really just isometric Dark Souls combat, and I just didn't enjoy it. So while I don't think it's bad necessarily, it's just not for me. Which is not a dissimilar case for the next entry, which is Spellforce Conquest of Eo. Now of all the games on this list, I would tell you that I probably like this one the most, and I think the game is very cool, and I might even continue to play it here and there in my spare time, but I also think trying to 100% this one would just be an awful experience, so I would rather not. Because fundamentally, I like a lot of what this game does. The focusing on building up your tower as well as your mage, which can be one of a bunch of subtypes, and then you have all these minions that you can engage in turn-based battle against other enemy armies with in an almost sort of grand strategy style. But nonetheless, I'm not really a huge fan of sort of grand strategy style games, so while I do enjoy what I've played of this one, I just know that actually forcing myself to sit down and go through every single thing and get every achievement for this would just really sour my overall opinion of what's left of this game, so I decided to just leave this one at the checkout video, because I can just tell if I did manage to 100% it, which honestly it seems pretty difficult from the difficulty section wise in a way that I'm not really used to, so I fully admit that I might not have just been able to do so, but provided I was and managed to push through that, I can just tell I'd probably hate this game by the end of it and I'd rather not do that to myself, so on this one I'm just skipping it. But that has been five games that I did not get the 100% on as a sort of update since that previous video, so I certainly hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it informative. By all means, let me know what you think about these games down in the comments section below, and by all means, let me know about some games you didn't think you would be able to get 100% on and then did, or games you gave up on, whatever floats your boat. Just like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, Truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.